Okay, for all you Caddyshack fans of Rodney Dangerfield, when the skies come down, look at all these bozos out, still playing golf in the pouring rain. What am I doing out here? Welcome to the bridge. We started playing before it rained, so watch our show. Welcome to the bridge. We're somewhere out in the east end of Long Island, golf mecca for the golfers. We're joined by eminent dealer Vito Schnabel and the owner of the bridge golf club, Bob Rubin. We're in front of this Tom Sachs geodesic dome, igloo, something like that. Thank you for having us, Bob. You're welcome. When you first conceived of the golf course nearly 20 years ago, did you anticipate it would be such an art center? Not at all, not at all. Well, I mean, I really didn't have any idea what I was doing because I'm not a real estate developer and I didn't play golf at the time, although I did have some art. So maybe that's why it uh, asserted itself. And now art is spread out over the clubhouse, the golf course, um, hidden rooms at the museum. There's artists as members, art dealers as members. Has it become the fabric of this club, in a sense? It, yes, and, and I would add that, not to geek out architecturally, but playing golf is like walking in a picturesque garden in the classic English sense of, it, of a garden where you go from one folly or one installation to another. Um, you know, you think of the great English gardens of the 18th century, and a round of golf is like a picturesque garden you know, assuming you keep your ball somewhat in play, the designer knows where you're going to be at different points on the course. And so you can cite artworks knowing that they're going to be viewed from different angles by different people at different times. The clubhouse is the same way. As you play, you're looking at this sculpture from different angles. And so in a way, art is a natural on a golf course. And Vito, was it part of the attraction for you to be here, to bring your friends, to bring artists? Well, I grew up, uh, my mother has a place in Bridgehampton, so I grew up out here and I ran into Bob and I knew he owned the course, built it, and I sort of cornered him and said, I need to join. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm sure we can work something out. And uh, it's always been a dream of mine to be able to play golf out here. I grew up going to Poxabog. Uh, and Bob was very generous with me and uh, patient, and, uh, and I think it worked out. And we've been able to do some really cool things. We both have a love for art, and Tom Sachs, who designed the trophy for the championship and many other things throughout the club, right? He's, he's kind of was one of the earliest artists that you've started yes, to work with Yes, and in here. fact, even before his art was here at the bridge, we installed one of his early works, Little T's Toilet, in the Maison de Verre, the house we own in Paris, which is an interesting house because of all the avant-garde plumbing that it has. And so I thought that Tom's toilet mm -hmm. made a lot of sense yes. uh, there. So we go way back. Yeah. Now you've been a design collector involved with the Pompidou. Is this a different kind of art experience for you or are they yeah. relate? No, they're, well, they're, everything is related. You know, I started with racing cars which is why I own this property in the which first place. Which is this? This used to be a racetrack, the Bridgehampton racetrack. And I bought it as an operating racetrack in 1981 and ran it until I couldn't anymore. And, uh, you know, in the same way that the racetrack mutated into a golf course, my love of machines mutated into a love of architecture, which somehow veered into a love of art. Now, art and golf are both, I guess, historically kind of privileged activities. How do you feel that is at the moment, and is it changing somehow? For um, your generation, do they see those things as uh, leftover of their dad and their granddads, or are they embracing these in a new way? Well, I think the art world just in general has grown so much over the last, you know, with the internet, uh, but also over the last 20 years, it's been something that, I don't know, people in my generation are quite interested in. And I think it also has become something that 
people have realized is quite a, could be quite a lucrative business too. So that's a trick. Golf or art? Well, both. If if you're Richard Prince, golf. He likes to. He can makes a lot of money on this golf course. But uh, but art, I'm talking about. Um, and golf. I don't know. I think golf has gotten cooler. Tiger certainly. Tiger changed the changed equation yeah. for that. Yeah, and golf has a long way to go. Yeah. Um, and it's also not a very good business, but for the fact that we're in this weird economic microclimate of the Hamptons. Yeah. And then, of course, p the pandemic has been a shot in the arm for golf in the sense that it saved a lot of municipal courses that were yes. teetering on the brink of bankruptcy. But, uh, you know, art art is a more hot speculative milieu than golf in any case. But you find that your young art clients, the NBA guys and all that are like, they're, they're new to art in the last three to five years. So they also like, oh, let me tee it up also. So I see it as a sort of like some similarities in um, attitude. Yeah. Honestly, the connection between golf and art, I mean, is something I see amongst a few people, but what Bob's done here with the art and the golf and just the whole kind of landscape is very special, as you said. It doesn't really exist. And it kind of, you know, I was looking at pictures the other day of the Chateau Lacoste, you know, uh, and, you know, this kind of has that vibe. And I yeah, feel but like they don't have a golf course. Correct. They right. don't have a golf right. course, but just the kind of uh, merging of art. And landscape. Uh, yeah, and landscape. Speaking of landscape, how are you dealing with climate change, environmental issues? This is, a, I don't know, how many hundreds of acres and diversity of, of how much water you're using and fertilizer. How are you seeing the future in, a, in this particular Well, time? this is a very, very low impact golf course because there's only 80 maintained acres out of a total acreage of 520 acres. So we actually use less water on this golf course than falls on the whole 520 acres in the form of rainwater. And because it's very sandy soil, we don't have a lot of standing water, so we don't use a lot of chemicals. And in terms of animal diversity, we have foxes, turtles, ospreys. Snakes. Uh, snakes, yeah, we have a few snakes, a lot of deer, you know, I think that, and plant-wise, this low bush is very rare cover. The suburbs kill this kind of low bush cover. And now, I wanted to get in a related way to the bridge's relationship to the Bridge Foundation, which is this golf program right. based in East Harlem. If you could tell us about that and how you're going to um, import that more well, here. Well, the Bridge Golf Foundation is a sports-based youth development program for kids in public high schools and underserved areas in New York, mainly Harlem, but also the South Bronx. And they come for three hours a day. We teach them to play golf on simulators. We take them to area golf courses. We run a varsity golf team for one of the high schools. And in the summer, they're here working on our golf operation and uh, playing golf. And it's basically uh, like a camp but it's not just a camp because they're also uh, working and learning. Well, Vito, that brings me back again. Sorry for making you the, the young gun. Is your generation leaning into philanthropy and in the same way have you seen an acceleration of that with what's going on in the world or is your generation still at the accumulation point of life, which, would be, which is kind of traditional? Yeah, I think that this 18 months that just went by and going through this pandemic definitely gave uh, a lot of, well, gave me a new perspective on how I can what, do better, honestly, and, uh, and how I want to spend my time, too, just being around my family more and not being on a plane as much and what you can do from being right here. But, uh, you know, I guess... We always try to give back. So we're going to head out to the links. We're going to see who's got the best swing versus who makes the best score and show some of our favorite sculptures on the course, a course unlike any in the United States. Okay. You ready it. to hit some balls? Yeah, sure. Uh, Thank you. Okay.
So one of the great things about playing golf at the bridge is if it's raining, you can still come inside and have like an experience looking at great Tom Sachs painting, Richard Prince car, Peter Kane painting, Richard Prince stuff, hang out in the prettiest clubhouse. I mean, so it's kind of a win-win, even though I was six under when the rain came on the way for my course record and then poof, thunderstorms. But we're here, pretty cool, huh?